Amen. We'd like to welcome out to the Potter's House Christian Fellowship Church here on a Wednesday evening. Let's go ahead and stand. Let's magnify Jesus as we sing that song. I am covered. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Walking by faith, living in love. And I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Jesus has rescued me. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Walking by faith, living in love. And I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Jesus has rescued me. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Walking by faith living in love and i am covered 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 by his blood jesus has rescued me i am covered 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 by his blood walking by faith living in love and i am covered 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 by his blood Jesus has rescued me. Jesus has rescued me. Jesus has rescued me. Oh, amen, amen. Let's sing that song. We can take the land. We can take the land. We can take the land. God is promised in His Word, we can take the land. Harvest time is ready, according to God's plan. Like Joshua and Caleb said, we can take the land. We can take the land. We can take the land. God is promised in His Word that we can take the land. Harvest time is ready, according to God's plan. Like Joshua and Caleb said, we can take the land. We can take the land. We can take the land. God has promised in His Word that we can take the land. Harvest time is ready, according to God's plan. Like Joshua and Caleb said, we can take the land. We can take the land. We can take the land. God has promised in His Word that we can take land. Harvest time is ready, according to God's plan. Like Joshua and Caleb said, we can take land. We can take the land. We can take the land. God has promised in His Word that we can take the land. Harvest time is ready, according to God's plan. Like Joshua and Caleb said, we can take the land. Oh, amen, amen. I want to encourage you, church, sing with all your heart as we sing this song. We've got the power. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power. In the name of the Lord, we've got the power. In the name of Jesus, we've got the power. 
we've got the power in the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, let's give him the praise and glory, church. Let's magnify Jesus in this place. Amen. Let's slow it down, church. Let's lift our hands as we sing this song. Awesome is the sun. Awesome is the sight of your holiness. Majestic is your purity. Your righteousness shines brighter than the sun on me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Glory, glory, glory to his matchless name. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. That was slain. That was slain. Awesome is the sight of your holiness. Majestic is your purity, your righteousness shines brighter than the sun on me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Glory, glory, glory to his matchless name. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain, that was slain. Oh, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Glory, glory, glory to his matchless name. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain, that was slain, that was slain. Oh, amen, amen, church. Let's sing this last song. Our God reigns. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of them that bring good news, good news, announcing peace, proclaiming news. Of happiness and our God reigns. 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 Proclaiming news of 
of happiness and all God reigns. All God reigns. All God reigns. God reigns. And our God reigns. And our God reigns. And our God reigns. Oh, let's give Jesus the glory and the praise. Let's worship him with our hearts. God in heaven, I thank you. Father, for your faithfulness, I worship you tonight. I give you the glory and the praise. Worthy is my God and my Savior in this place. Glory, glory to God. We serve a faithful Father in heaven. We want to come before heaven and pray for several needs. Remember to pray for the nation of Israel. We're going to pray for God's grace upon them and also to confound the enemies all around them. Pray for our nation, for a mercy and grace, our first responders, our military personnel, praying for our overseas missionaries and our churches. Pray for our president that God would save him. We want to pray also for salvation for Lucero uh, Beza. We want to pray for Torrance Neal, Kevin Gamble, Ali Gamble, pray for uh, your family, your friends, co-workers, neighbors that are not saved. Corina Mata, Michelle Navarro, Israel Garcia, the Estreo families. We want to believe God also for our new converts, visitors, uh, people that are missing tonight. We want to pray for grace upon them. Pray for our, the backslider to be restored and redeemed. Fruitfulness from our lives to grow the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray also for Han Smith, Mario Morales, Maria Martinez, uh, Maria Perez, Howard Kempa, Eleanor, uh, praying for Elroy McKee, also Lisa Gamble. All need miracles in their bodies, healing. Uh, we want to believe God to help you if you're here and you need healing. You're watching online and God can touch you where you're at. Uh, let's pray for our surrounding cities for revival. Our churches uh, affiliated with us as we pray. We want to pray also for our leadership, uh, Pastors Mitchell, Pastor Gooding, uh, Zebo, Pastor Schultz, their wives, their congregations, and then our sister churches there in Kimberley, South Africa, San Angelo, and in Fargo, North Dakota. Tonight you have a need. I want you to lift your hand, signifying that to the Lord Jesus, uh, and let's ask God to help us tonight that he would minister to, the, uh, to us in this place, an anointing that we need, uh, and as we subside, we're going to open in prayer and going to ask God for his blessing, and Lewis, if you'll come, open us up in prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you and we thank you. God, that you are faithful. God, we bring multitudes of needs before you. God, we need you to get involved, Father God. Father, by the blood of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are faithful, my King. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, your mercy, your dominion in this place, Lord God. Father, we ask you to come down, Lord God, to deliver your word into our hearts, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would minister into the hearts of men and women in this place, Lord God. Deliver us to, to a salvation, Lord God. We thank you and we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Turn and greet someone before you're seated, please.
Glory, glory to God. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight. I want to welcome all of you out to the Potter's House Christian Fellowship Church. Also, those of you that have joined with us online, thank you for doing that. Uh, we do have some things we want to let you know about. Uh, there is nursery that is available for uh, three and under. As uh, soon as the offering is over, you can take them to the room that's catty corner to here. And so take a right out to the sanctuary, that room there, if you need to use that. That'll be available. Sunday school, 4 to 12 years old for the kiddos um, on Sunday mornings. Uh, also looking ahead, we want to remind you to be in prayer about fruitfulness in your own lives, but also about the Sunday school. We want to start a Sunday school eventually for the adults on Sunday mornings. And I love doing Sunday school. But we need to grow a little more, and so uh, let's contend for that as well. So morning prayer, the doors are open, 7 a.m. Come and join with us, get a hold of God here at the building. Uh, and uh, if you cannot make it here, I'm encouraging you, I'm challenging you. Please get up, make time to pray, read your Bible, and uh, get a hold of God. So a couple of other things. Uh, there is uh, this coming weekend, there is no outreach on Saturday. We want to encourage you to spend time with your families. Uh, at some point, invite someone. If you're going to the grocery store, if you're going to go out to eat, you're going to eat a steak, invite me and I'll be there. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to go somewhere, I just want to encourage you, invite someone, tell someone about Jesus, take some flyers with you, take some of those business cards. Let's be fruitful for God. You never know what God will do. Amen. So I want to encourage you to invite someone for the services. On Sunday morning, we will be here at 10 o'clock for prayer meeting. At uh, 1030, we have refreshments. Uh, the calendar is up for the month of May for anyone that, uh, any of the ladies that you want to sign up to bring something on Sunday mornings, that's available. You know, if you want to bring something where there's already a name, put your name next to it. That's fine. We will gladly eat it. And so you can bring it. Amen. Uh, for that. And then Sunday uh, morning, we're going to continue in our sermon series that we've been doing that I forgot to put up here. So we've been doing the sermon series on the, free, the road to freedom and forgiveness. I want to encourage you to be in the service for that. And then Sunday night, we're going to continue with the memorial stones. Let me just say this. The memorial stones is a lot of information, but I want to say to you, as you begin to listen to this information, you take the time to come, God's not only going to give you the information you're going to get ministered unto, but you're going to begin to find that there is a basis for why we do this. Memorial stones, if you read your Bible, it was because it was a reference. So God would tell the people, then they would cross the Red Sea. or When they crossed the Jordan River, he said, I want you to take stones. I want you to pile those stones as memorials. And the reason why is so that when years down the road, their kids, their grandkids, great-grandkids are growing up, uh, and they see the stones, hey, Grandpa, wh Grandma, what do these stones mean by the Jordan River? That is when God opened the river for us to cross on dry land. So in other words, there were reference points. They did that several, several times. And this is what Pastor Mitchell's doing is he's using this to try to get the fellowship to understand why we do what we do as a fellowship. And so we're not just a, we're not a religious organization just getting together. We are a fellowship of churches that have a purpose. So I want to encourage you to be a part of those uh, on Sunday night. So also coming up, we have a sign-up sheet there in the back, Invasion Team and Outreach Team going to La Mesa, Texas, and possibly our band. We are forming a band. It is a rock band, and uh, we've got uh, three songs that we're working with. We're trying to get more, but it takes time to develop all this. So we might end up taking our three songs and going and making some noise there. And Pastor there said he would do some rap music, some R&Bs. But we need people to help us labor. And so if you will, please sign up on that sheet. Let us know how many people are coming with you so we can let Pastor know. And that will be happening on that date. Glory to God. Uh, looking ahead, there is a men's discipleship class that is coming up with Pastor Scott Lamb in Hobbs, New Mexico. This is going to be on the first Friday of May. I want to encourage all the men to rally together. Let's go down there, show our support for the work of God that he can minister to our lives. And then also looking ahead, and I'll put a flyer together for this, there is a women's get-together. And all the women should have said, oh, glory to God. 
Let me give you the details. There's a women's get-together paint and tea party from the ages of 5 and up on May 10th. This is going to be on a Friday night from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The cost is $15 per person. Now, that cost includes everything you need to paint, including an 11 by 14 stretch canvas. So there's a lady that's going to come in, and she's going to teach you how to paint. She's going to give you some pointers on uh, how to draw happy faces. I don't know what they do. But uh, Cynthia's uh, responsible for this, so she's asking sign up no later than May 5th. This includes paying the amount of the $15 per person that will be a part of that. Uh, please get with Cynthia to make your payment and uh, have a good time with that. And so I will try to work a flyer for this, but I want to encourage you to get involved, amen, in what God's doing in our church. There's life, amen. There's life in our church, and so God's doing some great things. Glory to God. I believe that's all we've got. We're going to give tonight. We want our ushers to come, and as we receive the offering this evening, I want to encourage you uh, to trust Jesus. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with the needs in your household. Let him be Jehovah Jireh. You have to let him be. That means that you trust him by giving, and then he provides miracle finances. As our heads are bowed, eyes are closed, Isaiah, if you'll pray. Amen. Thank you for giving. Let's sing a song when the offering goes around. I am covered. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Walking by faith, I'm living in love. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Jesus has rescued me. Well, I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. I'm walking by faith, I'm living in love, and I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Now Jesus has rescued me. Glory to God. One thing I failed to mention, uh, we are working now towards having live music for our song services starting on Sunday nights, and so we hope to uh, expand that Sunday morning, Sunday nights, Wednesdays, so that we get away from the music and we start performing. And so listen, if you want to be a part of a song service, listen, there doesn't need to be just one song service group. There needs to be two or three. Teenagers, you can form a song service group. Amen. But you need to realize it's going to require some things from you. Amen, because what you're going to end up doing is ministering for Jesus to bring the presence of God in, and so you can't be a silly billy. Yes, I understand your kids, but I'm, what I'm talking about is start being faithful. Come with your parents to every service. Start being involved. Start being an example to other kids. Other kids need to see you live for Jesus, and so that's what we're working towards. Just want to make note of that. I want you to turn in your Bibles this evening to the book of Acts chapter 20 book of acts in chapter 20 uh, 1986 1987 I don't remember exactly the year i think it was 1980 end of 1986 or 1987 deborah and i were young we still are we're not just as young though as you are so deborah and i were teenagers uh deborah had just turned 16 we had just started courting I was 17, going on 18. Uh, we went to a Bible conference with several people in the church at that time. And so what we did is we, uh, several of us rode together, and uh, we carpooled over to Prescott, Arizona to go to a first Bible conference. This was going to be our very, very first Bible conference. By this time, I already knew I was called to preach. I found out I was called to preach from God about three months after I got saved, so this is down the road now, a year, year and a half into my salvation, and now I'm going to court a young lady that hopefully is going to be my wife. We're going to go preach the gospel. So I already had things in mind and questions and ideas that were beginning to form in, in my heart and in my mind. 
And when we went to this Bible conference, you have to realize this was in the early uh, or late 80s. And when we went, there was an atmosphere in the church of revival. The church there in Prescott, Arizona was growing, growing. There were churches that were being planted now. It seemed like it was accelerating. Uh, and there was an atmosphere of revival. But we're talking about a huge Bible conference where at that time we thought it was huge. It was around probably 600 to 800 people. Now I said all that to say this. When we got there, there were leaders in our fellowship, men of God that I looked up to. These were men that we had begun to hear about. They were preaching around the world. They were doing great things for God. And there were three of them that were standing together. And I had, as I said earlier, I had questions, uh, things I wanted to ask of them. I wanted to pick their brains, if you will. Uh, I'm a young disciple. I want to learn things because I want to grow. I want to become a preacher of the gospel. So I went right up to them. I smiled, and maybe my smile scared them. But I smiled and I held out my hand and I said, Hi, I'm Robert Hernandez from Midland, Texas, the Door Church. And all three of them turned, and because they were in conversation, all three of them turned and looked at me and kind of rolled their eyes and turned back and didn't even say anything to me. They continued in their conversation. Now, I said that to say this. When I approach ministry... I approach ministry with the intention of helping people. That is the intention that I have in my heart because I had in the past things like this that happened that I just told you about. As a young pastor, when I began to pastor, there were pastors that I began to turn to. I began to call some pastors that I didn't even know, uh, and I began to ask, and some pastors began to help me, but I began to find other pastors uh, that did not want to help me at all. They would not answer questions. And so I want to look with you at how to become a blessing to others. Because your life and my life is meant to help and bless your brother, your sister, the one sitting next to you, the one that rubs you the wrong way, the one that you can't stand how they laugh or smell. And I want to look with you at this issue out of Acts chapter 20, one portion of Scripture that we're going to read tonight. Acts 20, verse 35. This is the Apostle Paul talking. He says, I showed you in all things that you should work as I did and help the weak. I taught you to remember the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let's pray. Father in heaven, tonight we thank you that you are faithful to meet with us, God. I thank you for your Holy Spirit upon me, God. I pray quicken your word, God. Stir our hearts, God. Enlarge us, God. Help us not to be small-hearted, small-minded people, God. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. And amen. How to become a blessing to others. I want you to think about the practical unattractiveness side of human nature. Because we need to see the essence of sin because sin changes human nature. Now, think about this because sin is self-centeredness. Rooted in it is self-centeredness or more commonly known as selfishness so in the bible think about genesis chapter 3 verse 6 it says these words the woman saw that the tree was beautiful and that it was fruit that was good to eat and that it would make her wise so she took some of the fruit and ate it so the word of god now is giving us a picture here is mankind adam and eve they were created in perfection everything was perfect there was no sin in the earth at that time when God created everything perfect, including Adam and Eve. But the Bible says that the serpent, or that is Satan, he came and what he began to do is to appeal to the lower nature, or that is, to the flesh. Now why? You have to ask questions. I ask questions when I'm reading, and I said, God, why? Why? Why did he appear and why did he come to her and not to him first? 
And I believe the reason why is because Satan was coming to bring something that caused him his own ministry, his own life, if you will. Because the Bible says he was a beautiful angel in heaven. Music naturally flowed from him. But here's someone now that something has shifted in his own heart. Because what we're seeing is the temptation of self-interest at work here. Genesis chapter 3, <clears throat> verses 2 through 5. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the tree in the garden. Pay attention to the words. But God did say, You must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So think about this. Satan comes. There is perfection. They have not sinned. But what he comes and he begins to speak some simple words to her. And he says, listen, God knows that you will become like him if you eat from that tree. You will know things that he knows. In other words, uh, there is an issue right here, and she begins to contemplate this uh, because in her heart she's thinking, well, maybe I don't necessarily need God and I can do this on my own. Why? Because self-centeredness is part of the sinful nature. Now, I know that there are no selfish people in this church today. Absolutely not a single person, right? I'm preaching this to all those that are watching online. Well, the reality is that this is at the core of you and me. Self-interest, selfishness. We won't ever say, well, I'm a selfish person. But it's seen in the choices, the decisions that you make. In the mornings, I wonder how many of you say, nah, not today. I'm not brushing my hair. I'm not brushing my teeth. I'm not putting deodorant. I'm not going to take a shower. In fact, you know what, just today, hey, babe, can I get a kiss? No, you, you, you want your husband, you want your wife, go brush your teeth, right? Go take a shower, please. So think about this. You take time in front of the mirror. How many of you looked at yourself this at least once today in the mirror? Okay, let me ask this. How many of you looked at yourself at least three times? Don't answer that question. <laughs> because you, 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 you're, you're, you care about yourself. That's fine. But really at the core, it's self-interest. You want to make sure that you appear well or good. You want to make sure you smell right. You want to make sure that, and there's nothing wrong with that from that perspective, but at the core of it is self-interest. You know, it's like um, cheesecake. Anybody like cheesecake here? Yeah, I figured that's one of the desserts that most people like. Chocolate cake. You know, when we go to Rosa sometimes on Wednesday nights, it doesn't fail. Elena always gets a chocolate cake. And when she gets the chocolate cake, she seems to pick out the one that's the, mo the moistest. She always seems to pick out the bigger ones because she wants to make sure she has enough for herself. That's fine. But at the core of everything we do, it comes down to self-interest. And this is what I want you to see, beloved, because what the devil does is he appeals to your self-interest because he knows from experience, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, how you have fallen. This is talking about Lucifer or Satan. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low of the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will rise above the throne of the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly and the uttermost heights of the mount of Zephron. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high God. Put your thinking caps on, folks. 
Listen, when God created creation, he created them perfect. When God created the angels, he created them perfect. You follow me? I'm trying to get you to get the big picture. He made everything perfect. Lucifer was perfect, but within the heart, he gives every person the ability to choose. Amen. Every single one of you, you have a choice. You can make your own decisions. And Satan made his, and he tells us his words, I, I, it's about me, it's about me, it's about me. See, sin is selfishness. It is a way of looking at life. It's all about me. What do I get out of this? If I help you, what do I get out of this? So <clears throat> throughout the Bible, we have numerous accounts of people because of selfishness. It costs other people. Now, the sin nature, that is selfishness, continues to work in the hearts of God's people even after salvation. <clears throat> Consider this. See, I want you to think about a couple of things. Number one, selfishness refused to give to others. Isn't it amazing what the Apostle Paul is pointing out here? Listen, I... He's, he's talking about various things, but he's actually very pointedly talking about one thing, and that is you, me, our time. Look at the words. I showed you all things that you should work as I did to help who? The weak, right? In our minds, we think of weak people as people who can't do for themselves. This is more than that. This is actually talking about people who are weak in areas in their life. For instance, how many of you here play an instrument? Anybody play an instrument? Okay. When you first started playing that instrument, did you take off immediately? Absolutely not. You were weak. When, you, when it comes to singing, someone has to teach you. You don't have it all down. Someone has to help you. This is what he's talking about, is helping people who are weak. And we're going to examine that in a few minutes. But he goes on, I taught you to remember the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. In our minds, we tie this into money, and it can be tied to money. But he's actually talking about giving of yourself. He's talking about you investing yourself into other people. Investing your time to help new converts. Listen, we have several new converts in the church. They don't know how to live for Jesus. They don't know how to be good Christians. They need you and me to invest, to give ourselves to help them live for Jesus. They need us to help them how to read the Bible, how to study, how to find gold in the Bible. This can require many things, your time, your money, your knowledge. But see, we live in a society, we live in a time where people are selfish, even in the church. People who want to only look out for themselves. Well, I'll help them, Pastor, as long as they don't surpass me. I don't want to teach them everything I know because then they might become better than me. That is the goal. Our goal, listen, our goal as Christians is to help other people live for Jesus better than us. It's not, it's not this whole thing, is, well, I'm a super Christian and you lowly Christians are going to be here. If that's your mindset, you need to repent because that's not the heart of the God we serve. You know, when I first started with this company that I work for, I was talking to a co-worker today about it. I already knew how to work on copy machines. I had years of experience, but the problem is I didn't know the protocols for working on Canon machines. <clears throat> I had never worked on those machines. There are certain protocols that you need to go through in order to transfer files from one machine to another machine so that you, you don't lose the data. I didn't know that stuff. I go to work on this machine. I've only been with the company two weeks, uh, and this machine has to have a hard drive replaced. There are numerous uh, uh, files that are on there. They have to be transferred. Uh, 
<clears throat> she sends me with an experienced technician. We get to this place. I'm asking question after question because I want to learn. This guy's not saying anything to me at all. So I'm doing what I think should be done because of what I've done with the machines in the past. Sure enough, as soon as I finish, then he pipes up, great, you screwed it up. Except he used a cuss word. You screwed it up. Now all their files are lost. And I was mad. I mean, I was fuming on the inside. I told the customer, I said, look, I'll restore the files. I'll figure out how to do this, and uh, I'll come back. And so we walked outside. He walked to his car. I followed him, and I chewed him out. I give him a piece of my mind. I didn't cuss him out in case you're wondering. I'm saved. I can control my tongue. And so my point was his mentality, his attitude was, I'm not going to show you anything because then you'll be a better technician than me. And that is unfortunately sometimes the mindset in the church. Is you have people who will not help other people be better musicians than them. They will not help them be better students of the word of God. They will not help them be better Christians. Listen, some of you that are older, you have experienced. There are things that you have learned in the time that you have been saved, and you could be a blessing and help other people in the church. But for some, they keep that information to themselves. Oh, let, them, let them learn by mistake, Pastor. Let them fall on their face. You know, when I came into the church in Odessa in 1990, we had just gotten married, and my wife and I, we had already been uh, saved. At, I had been saved five years by that time. My wife, six years. And you know what's interesting is I began to build a relationship with Pastor Schultz in 1990, and I began to realize this man was trying to help me avoid the pitfalls that he had experienced in pioneering. He knew I wanted to pioneer, and he had made some mistakes. He had found some pitfalls, and he began to teach me little by little, you know, Robert, just be careful. Don't do this. You know, Robert, uh, be careful about this, because he wanted to see me succeed. That is the heart that we need to have. A heart that wants to help people succeed in their Christianity, in their faith, in their walk with God. You and I need to be people who are willing to give out to people what we know to help them. See, selfishness refuses to give others the help that they need. Second of all, selfishness views others as competitors. In the church, if we are not careful, we can begin to view our brothers and our sisters as the competition. They are not your competition. They are your brothers and your sisters. You should be lifting up one another. You should be propelling others above you, above yourself. Mark chapter 9, verse 34 and they, talking about the disciples, had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. You know, the Bible's an honest book. Amen. And it gives you the description of the disciples. This is before Jesus died on the cross. Here they are. Think about this in simple, simple practical terms. Here are 12 disciples that are following Jesus. Day in and day out, they have lunch, breakfast, dinner. They go together everywhere. Jesus is helping them. They're going to become the leaders of the church one day. And yet what's amazing, they're with the Son of God. And yet the Bible says that they're walking along and the disciples are having an argument, I'm better than you. You know what? I preach better than you. I pull better altar calls than you. You know what? I dress better than you. You know what? I do things better than you. In other words, the Bible records that they were arguing among themselves who was the greatest. And the Son of God is right there with them. What I'm saying by that, don't tell me, well, if Jesus was here, I would really love God. Jesus is here. He's right here. He's in the room with us. He's in your hearts. 
And yet, selfishness is still in there in all of us. Amen. Because if we're not careful, we can begin to view other people as the competition. If I help them, Pastor, what if they go out before I do? Great. If I help them, Pastor, what if they take over my ministry? Great. Believe me, there are going to be lots of ministries that we need. A lot of things. As the church gets bigger, guess what? There's more to do. There are bigger barns that have to be built because, you know what? The, uh, it gets dirty in there. There's a lot of dung. Amen. So I want you to understand this. You cannot view your brother or your sister as the competition. Because when you begin to view people as the competition, you will hold back from supporting them and helping them. You know why you hear me challenge you and stir your hearts <coughs> to go to the Bible studies? Because I'm asking you to support the people that God's raising up. I'm asking you to support them. I'm asking you to help them. You attending, but pastor, I already know the Bible. Don't make it about you. Don't make it about you. Why don't you go there to be an example? Why don't you go there to be a help, to be a blessing, to be an encouragement to someone else that looks at you? You know, I don't know if you realize this. <coughs> Over a process of time, people in the church start looking to you as an example, as a reference point. See, when we begin to do this and we begin to work against people <clears throat> instead of helping them, this is destructive to the work of God, to the kingdom of God. Three things that it causes, and we're going to move on. <clears throat> Number one, it causes conflict, contention, and it breeds envy, jealousy. Because at the core is self-interest. And self-interest is always prideful. Second of all, it causes people from helping in spiritual things. You know what we're trying to do, church? We're not trying to build our own kingdom here. We're trying to do something for God. We want God to use us. But you know what happens? Is if you begin to hold back from helping other people, from elevating other people above yourself, it begins to hinder. It begins to cause frustration in the church. It begins to cause new converts to reconsider their salvation. Well, why should I stay safe? Seems like nobody wants to help me. Seems like nobody wants to invest time into my life. When's the last time that you made it a point to go visit someone because you just genuinely care about them? See, some people don't hinder others intentionally, but they don't help either because they don't want to see others succeed, advance, surpass them, look better than them. Number three, it will limit ministry in the church and frustrate what God is trying to do. And this is actually displeasing to the Father. <clears throat> Let's look secondly at having a giving heart. Because Paul reveals his approach to life and to the church and the people of God. And I want you to think for a moment about who Paul is at this time. He's an apostle. In other words, he's one of the leaders in the fellowship that they have. He's one of the key men there. In other words, he has gone through some things. He has learned some things, and God has elevated him, and yet he has a servant's heart. Even though he is, if you will, gotten, gotten to a place of headship, listen, he still wants to help people. That must never change. No matter how much you are elevated by God, if you become something greater than you are now, listen, don't let, let it change you from having a servant's heart. So verse 35, 
He says, I showed you in all things that you should work as I did and help the weak. I taught you to remember the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Paul's telling us, I work, I labor, I give myself intentionally to help people. You know, one of the things that I've learned to do since pioneering in 1995, my first church, I've pioneered three times, probably more than that, because it seems like in every city you've got to pioneer over and over and over and over. But I've pioneered three churches. You know what I realize? There needs to be someone that can help the pioneer pastor. When we first went out, we didn't have a lot of structure like we do today in our fellowship. <clears throat> so what I intentionally do is I reach out to new pastors. Pastor Cedric, the first time he's gone out, he goes into Big Spring, Texas. He doesn't know anything. So you know what I did? I intentionally reached out to Pastor Cedric and said, hey, anything I can do to help you, let me know. You want to sermonize, let's sit down and figure out how to write a sermon. You want to figure out how to study the Bible. You want to figure out how to do these things. I invited him over to dinner. He had just gotten here. I invited him to dinner, and then I invited uh, the Lewises <laughs> to come with us because I knew they wanted to go preach the gospel one day. I wanted them to see, listen, other people can and will help you. I want him to know that the pastor that just took over, we had him preach. Uh, I think it was last year that he came, Pastor Ray Ortega, Ortega Jr. from La Mesa, took over the church just a few months ago. Now he's pioneering a church there in La Mesa, taking over the work of God. I told him when he came to the men's discipleship on Monday, I spent time talking to him, and I said, listen, brother, anything that I can do to help you, I want to help you succeed. Why? Because we're talking about having a certain heart that is willing to give out and help other people succeed, even if they become better than me, even if their churches grow bigger than mine. My goal is to help people. That's what I'm trying to impart into you. Have a heart that wants to help people. Don't tear people down. Give of yourself. Give of yourself. Uh, are people going to appreciate you? Not all the time. Are people going to say thank you all the time? No. Will you still care? Will you still give yourself? You see, as I close, I want to look with you at how to become a blessing to others. Because there's a powerful promise that we find here in our scripture. Giving brings blessing. Paul is simply quoting the words of Jesus because he understands. And he said, I taught you to remember the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, let's be honest. We all like receiving. How many of you would not like to receive $100 from me right now? Yeah, exactly. You would gladly take a $100 bill from me if I gave that to you because we like receiving. But he's making a point. He says, listen, Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. You know why it's such a blessing to give? Because it's pleasing to the Father. It reveals the heart of your Father. Listen, you're more like Jesus when you give of yourself than when you take. Amen. You're more like Jesus when you give than when you take. A couple of things that we're going to close. Number one, giving of yourself to help others pleases God. It is well-pleasing to the Father. Matthew chapter 13, verse 12, for whoever has to him will be given more. You know what God gives you? Listen, I don't know why I can only speak for Hispanics or Mexicans because I are one. For Hispanics, I don't know why it's in our culture to think, I'm not going to tell you everything I know because then that makes you better than me. It's in our culture. It's in our mentality. 
So we refuse to help people succeed more than us. You can succeed, just don't pass me. Why do you think that God saved you? God saved you because he knows that those mentalities, those hard attitudes are still in there. And yet he still loves you. So my point is very practical. Listen, you need to understand the more you give of yourself, listen, whether it's knowledge, you're going to give out knowledge. Hey, listen, let me help you. This is how I figured out how to study. This is how I figured out how to live for God. This is how I figured out this. You know what God says? As you're giving out, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you more. You know what I pray for? I'm constantly asking God, God, give me an understanding heart. God, help me to learn to love people where they're at. Because I know not everybody's at the same level. But help me to love people where they're at. Why? Because, you know, some people, they need a little more love than others. They, they need a little, little more attention. You know what's encouraging to my heart, to my wife, to see people like you come to church and change and rise and grow to see you begin to care about other people. That's what we love. And God says, you learn to love people like that? I'm going to give you a greater love. I'm going to give you a greater ability to do more. You give out finances to help people, I'm going to give you finances. You give out your time, I'm going to give you people who give you time. On and on and on, because this is pleasing to the Father. This is the principle of flow. Go read in 1 Kings the story. Here's the story. A woman has no money. She's going to take her son. She's going to die. And it's amazing, the man of God comes. There's a famine in the land. There's no water. Nothing is growing. Everything's dying. But the man of God comes to this widow woman and says, listen, bring me something to drink and bring me a little bit of meal or food. And she's honest. She says, look, I barely have enough for my son and I. We're going to make one last meal and then we're going to die. There's no more. And you know what he says? Bring the jar, and I want you to go to your neighbors, and I want you to ask your neighbors for as many jars as you can find, anything you can find, and bring what you have, the cruise of oil, and I want you to begin to pour it. Now, think about this. She has a small little bottle of oil. That's all she has. She's going to cook her last meal, and then they're going to die. But the Bible says, the man of God said, Thus saith the Lord, it shall not fail. And sure enough, here's, they start bringing all these different jars, all these different cups, whatever they could find. And she's taking the cruise of oil that has very little in it, and she's pouring, pouring until it's full. And then she's pouring into another, it's full. These are all different sizes. It'd be like me coming up to this one, and we're going to fill this one. And she takes it, and that whole thing gets full from this. Jar after jar after jar. She's sending the kids. They're finding all that they can do, going to the neighbors, going to their end, going to everyone, and they're pouring. The, you know when it stopped? You know when the oil stopped? When they had no more jars. It is the principle of flow. God can cause things to flow and flow and flow into your life as you give out and give out and give out. You're never going to run out because God will give you more. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Giving of yourself brings satisfaction to your heart. Tonight, you're in this place, but you're not right with God. I'm not asking you if you know information. I'm not asking you if you believe in him. I know you believe in him. You're here. What I'm asking you is right now, are you right with God? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. It could be while we're sitting here in church. 
It could be while you're driving home, the rapture happens. Suddenly, millions upon millions of people disappear from the driver's seat, disappear from the airplanes, disappear from the train stations, the trucks. Where we live, there are so many 18-wheelers just disappear. Chaos. Are you ready for Jesus to come back? And if you're not, Raise your hand. Give your life to Jesus. Quit playing games. Quit making excuses. Give your heart to God. Repent of your sins, and he will forgive you. It doesn't matter what you've done, my friend. Jesus loves you. He wants to heal your heart. He wants to come and be your God and your Savior quickly. You would lift your hand to him right now saying, that's me, Pastor. Would you pray for me? I'm not right with God, but I need to be quickly. Hold it up. Hold up your hand. Quit fighting God. Lift your hand to the Lord. Anybody in this place not saved or you're backslidden, at one time you had given your life to Christ, but your heart is not right. You know by the way that you're living that you're not right with God. You're not out killing people. You're not out raping people. But you're not living right. You're living in sin. Quickly, anybody in this place not saved, not born again, God's dealing with you. I feel the Holy Ghost dealing with people's hearts right now. I'm not asking you if you're religious. I'm asking you, are you right with God? You lift your hand. Stretch it out. Hold it up for just a moment. We want to lead you to Jesus. Glory to God. Speaking to people that are watching online, you lifted your hand. You're listening from wherever you're listening from. I want to lead you. I want you to pray with me and say the words, Jesus, I repent of all my sins and I confess them to you. I ask you to save me. I thank you for dying on the cross shedding your blood from my sins. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In a moment, we're going to stand, church. My question to you is very simple. Does selfishness rule or does Jesus rule in your hearts? You have to become a person that gives, gives of themselves. God will help you. Let's stand. These altars are open. Let's become givers. These altars are open. We're going to sing a song. Our God reigns. your hands and sing it out church our God reigns
God reigns. Cause our God reigns. And our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Let's glorify the Lord. Let's give Him glory tonight. Father, thank you. Father, you are faithful to meet with us, God. I give you the glory and the praise. Wonderful, wonderful Savior, Redeemer. Father, we magnify your name. Glory to God. I want to pray for anyone here that you're sick, you're in pain, you need healing. I want you to come. I want to pray for you. I need Isaiah, Lewis to come up here. Help me pray for these Anybody else, you're sick, you're in pain, you need healing in your body. We want to believe God for you. Amen. We serve a God of miracles. Amen. God is in the business of saving people, touching people, healing people, setting them free. So I want to pray for people and believe God to help you. So glory, glory, glory. All right, I'll come to you. Amen. All right, so we're going to pray for these. Uh, what's going on, brother? You still have that pain? Okay, so we're going to pray. He has a pain in his side. Let's stretch out to our hands, church. Let's pray. Father in heaven, God, I speak to this pain. I bind you. I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. Loose him by the blood. Oh, I command the body to function properly in the name of Jesus. So tell me if there's any difference. Any difference whatsoever. Sounds good. Is it still hurting? It's a little bit. Well, a little bit is not enough. Let's pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, right now I command all pain to leave. You stubborn spirit, I rebuke you. I bind this sickness. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. Any difference? Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. God, I give you the glory. Sickness. Okay, stretch out your hands, church. Father in heaven. God, I pray for my wife. God, I bind every assault, every sickness. I bind witchcraft and sorcery, evil words that have come against her. Father God, spoken against her. God, I pray for her health. God, I pray, God, bring healing and deliverance. I command all sickness, all infection to leave right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any difference that you can tell right now? Your ear was hurting. Yeah, it was hurting. Oh, glory to God. All right. Your throat still hurts? Okay, put your hand on your throat. Let's pray. Father in heaven, God, I bind this spirit right now. Loose in Jesus' name. It's worse? No. Oh, he said worse. <laughs> oh, my God, what did I do? All right, all right, so I'll get back to you. I'm praying for Zeke. Can we go? Um, golfing. Golfing. Okay, let's pray for you, coughing. Father in heaven, right now, God, I bind this fever, God. I bind this cough. I speak healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Loose him right now by the blood. How do you feel? <laughs> okay, you got one now? Okay, lift your hands. Let's pray. Father in heaven, right now, God, I thank you, God. I plead the blood of Jesus over my granddaughter. God, touch her to make her whole. You sickness, I rebuke you. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Now, was there anything hurting, anything you can tell in difference? Okay. All right. You let your dad know. Yes, ma'am. Was I praying for her? Oh, okay, okay. How, how long have you had this? Um, it started re uh, re recently, so it's just been up and down. They gave me medicine for it, but, uh, hmm. and it's kind of tired with like, the blood pressure a little bit. Okay, I want to pray with you. Okay. okay, I want you to say, and I want you to lift your hand, the other hand. Stretch out your hands, church. I want you to say with me, Father in heaven, Father in heaven I, repent I repent of all anger, of all anger. hatred. Hatred, malice, malice bitterness. bitterness. I choose to forgive, choose to forgive my, husband my husband and all those that have hurt me. And all those who have I, release them, I release them 
I release them. I command my body, I command my body to, function to function properly. I bind this high blood pressure and this dizziness. I speak healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, by the blood. Lord, right now, by the blood of Jesus, I bind you, you foul spirit. I rebuke you. I command you to come out of her. Right now, I cast out all sickness, God. All God, I pray for healing, God, by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Okay, so is there, were you dizzy when you came up? Yes. Okay, is there any difference whatsoever right now? What happens if you walk around? Well, I, I was standing here, so I'm dizzy. It, it loosened up a little bit. Still there, though? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pray one more time. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, right now, a complete healing. Father in heaven, by the blood, right now, a complete healing, God. I bind this dizziness. I speak, uh, God, to this mind, God. I speak to this body, God, uh, that it would be healed by the blood. Okay, so what's going on? I feel better. I feel better because I was real dizzy a while ago. Well, let's give God praise. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Hi, Mijo. Darn stinking cough. All right, lift your hands. Am I pray for you, sister? Just pray. Okay, lift your hands, Mijo. And let's pray, Father in heaven, right now. God, I bind this cough. I bind this sickness. I plead the blood. God, touch him. Make him whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so you let mom know, okay? High five, dude. All right. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So, let's pray. Okay. Stretch out your hands, church. I want you to say, Father in heaven, I repent of all worry, anxiety, and fear. I cast out fear. I pray for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I need you to touch my mind. I need you to heal me. In Jesus' name, by the blood, amen. Oh, God, touch your God. Right now, Father God, I pray that you would set her free, God. God, I bind this tormenting spirit, God. I bind worry, fear, and anxiety, God. I command it to leave. I pray for the peace of God, the Holy Ghost to come upon her to help her and minister to her. God, give her peaceful rest in Jesus' name. You let me know tomorrow, okay? Oh, you're helping. All right, you guys, let's go back to our chairs. We're going to be dismissed. Amen. I want to encourage you, help people. Help people. Give of yourself. Amen. As our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Joaquin. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for those of you watching online.